One area where these two are very different is weight. I have $14,000 worth of Dizinio leather and wood and matte paint. That G-Wagon weighs in at 5,700 pounds. I have a chassis designed in the 1970s. Yeah, I'll say that again, almost 6,000 pounds. I have four exhausts that come out on either side, under the body. Which is a huge amount of weight. That is a massive amount of weight. I have a locking rear diff, I have a locking front diff, and I have a locking center diff. But most importantly, I have this huge smile on my face because taking 140 thousand dollar vehicle off-road seems really sinful and yet really satisfying you know what this is this is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon solid axles front and rear locking differentials and we're on the articulated section maxed out on articulation and it's time to play with some goodies so in this Wrangler I have a lever to select four-wheel drive low so I have to put it in neutral and now I have my lockers on a rocker switch and I don't have a center diff lock and that's because when I put this vehicle in four-wheel drive we've got a 50-50 power split or torque split um, so I'm just gonna do front and rear for the heck of it front and rear axles lock just like that and then I might as well do my sway bar disconnect just because I have one and the G-Wagon doesn't. It's hard to believe that this twin turbo V8 4 liter that puts up 416 horsepower and 450 pound foot of torque made it to a seven speed automatic transmission is actually the smallest engine you can get under the hood of the current G-Wagon. Okay, I only have 285 horsepower but I somehow think that at one and a half miles an hour going through a ravine in a forest, that's going to be enough. But is it fun having 416 horsepower? Yeah, I do admit it's a lot of fun having 416 horsepower. 9.3 inches of ground clearance, which is uh, really good. Certainly enough to tackle anything on this relatively, I'm gonna call it medium trail. Of course, in this Wrangler, I have the ability to pull the doors and top off, which, I mean, it's a wonderful day here in Oregon, why not? This is the best trail we could find, given that we only had the Wrangler and the G-Wagon for exactly two hours, and you know what? That's not bad when you only have two hours to actually find something this uh, fun to drive. But with the doors and the roof on, the front and sideward visibility are nothing near to what they are in the G-Wagon. It's incredible how much visibility you have in that G-Wagon with those thin A and B pillars. I'd rather spend an hour off-roading than a week in the office. All right, let's see, I've got a little bit of a ditch I have to cross here. I wanna give you a million things cause this isn't love what it's all about. How to make you smile again Something that I wanna figure out I wanna catch I wanna catch you like every time that you fall I wanna give you the world The world that is outside you want Look at that Even with kind of, sort of off-roady tires This truck, and it is a truck, it's body on frame of course Has no problems whatsoever And the other cool thing about this is it's a very narrow vehicle these Pirelli Scorpio Zero tires are about as off-road worthy 
of a tire you're gonna get from Mercedes from the factory. You know, they're not bad. They're not as good as the KO2s on the Wrangler, but for a tire mounted on a 19 inch wheel, they do suit the look of the G-Wagon. In this Wrangler, we have the tow group, and that may make you think that you can tow whatever you want, wherever you want, because it's a Rubicon, but the fact of the matter is, this maxes out at 3,500 pounds of towing. That Gelunde Wagen can tow 7,000 pounds, so twice as much. Yeah, it's a hot day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. You should hit me with the splash gun so I cool down. Won't you come on over? We can party till the sun's down. Baby, let me buy you a drink while we're dancing to blink. I could go for some queen beat too. Bass is going boom boom. <laughs> You might be wondering, why is this G-Wagon worth almost three times as much as the Wrangler you're testing? I'll give you three reasons, okay? Here's number one. Here's number two. And, best of all, here is number three. Can your Wrangler do any of those three? Well, yeah, yes, it has hood and it has a door and it has an exhaust. Yeah, it's like crinkling tin paper when you close them. This is like shutting a bank vault door. That is a good cliche because it's exactly what it is. So I do a lot of this when I'm uh, on these shoots, especially when we don't know the area and we're looking for places to go off-road. And that's just walking along, looking for places to go off-road. I don't think this is a possible trail. It doesn't go anywhere, it looks like. The other thing too is, obviously it's just us out here in the loaned $140,000 car. We don't want to damage it and I'm worried that these shrubs may pinstripe it a little bit. Especially with that $12,000 or $14,000 or whatever it is matte paint or some crazy price on that stuff. Here's the good, the bad, and the kind of weird. So the good is right here. Look at this. That is a massive skid plate. That's what you want when you go off-roading. This, on the other hand, that's the bad. That is just plastic. That is definitely going to break. And the weird, not one, but two Mercedes-Benz logos. Tommy, here's the thing. I think we both love these vehicles. I really do like that G-Wagon. And I really do love this Jeep. I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. No, I mean, off-road here, they've both done amazing. We haven't really pushed them that much, but even still, they're, they're solid axle, body on frame, trucks essentially. Yeah, yeah, you know, old school. And I think both you and I agree that there's no substitute for old school. Forget all those electronic controls, terrain management, give me old school lockers, good approach departure angle, and give me something that's worked for generations. It's worked for 70 years, it'll work for another 70. Hell yeah. officially stuck but this is where the g-wagon's magic comes in let me show you any world-class off-roader this g-wagon of course has a low range low range engaged but that's not all because now I can engage not one not two but three locking differentials so center lock rear lock front lock and these don't lock until these lights up here light up so right now I've engaged them but they're not locked so let me put it in drive and see if I can get these bad boys to lock up now time for the good the bad and the weird I love these steel bumpers they're winch ready, that's awesome. 
the bad. When you take the doors off, you still lose your mirrors, which means you have to have these little funny peg mirrors that you put in here. I'd love to see them on the body. That's kind of bad. And the weird is just all the Easter eggs everywhere. There's a lot of Easter eggs on this Jeep, including up here, which you will almost never ever see. It says Jeep. I'm not, I'm not sure why they have the need or feel the need to put Jeep logos and little willies everywhere. Because it's a little willy. Little will? No, it's not a little willy. This is the big cojona. That's what she said. Ugh. So this Jeep stickers at over $53,000. And when I saw that, it, it just blew my mind. I mean, that's a, that's a big, big, big ask for a Wrangler. Of course, it is an unlimited Rubicon. We do have the steel bumper group, the hard top, which is off, of course. We've got the big 8.4 inch screen. So you get a lot of tech, but 53 grand seems to me like a lot of money for an off-road rig. You know, you worry about scratching it. But when you compare it to the G-Wagon, which starts at $123,000, and the one that we tested, 140 grand, all of a sudden 53 seems pretty reasonable. Now there is a new G-Wagon that was introduced. We were there, uh, that's coming out soon. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure you need a new one. When, when you have something this iconic, you really want to mess with it. All we got was a little bit more tire slip. It really, it's a test of tires more than anything else, right? It's a test of grip. Now the question, Tommy, I've been struggling with driving this thing up and down for the last two hours is, if I had $140,000, would I spend it on that G-Wagon? Because let's face it, the Wrangler you're driving is just as good in terms of off-road as that G-Wagon. And the answer is, hell yeah, of course I would. And you might wanna know why. And the reason is, off-road at least, you will find Wranglers everywhere. But off-road, off Hollywood Boulevard, that is going to be the unique vehicle to have because almost nobody who buys that actually uses it for its true capabilities. And using it like we did today is what makes it so cool. As always, this is Roman and behind the camera, Tommy, saying thanks for watching. Remember, check out TFLcar.com for more news views and of course, classic TFL mashup reviews. See you guys next time. I got to give this thing back and I am super sad.